Greetings, fellow humans, and happy Halloween! So today, I am going to be starting on a project that I've been turning over in my brain for nearly a year. I had this idea last November and have had to hold myself back from starting it, so it is time. Basically, I wanted to do another Nightmare Before Christmas cosplay slash costume. Basically, I wanted to do another Nightmare Before Christmas cosplay or costume, and then this concept just appeared in my head, came to me in some kind of divine flash of inspiration to take this style of iconic 1960s dress and this raggedy collection of fabrics and combine them into one magical creation. That is the adventure I'm taking you on today. Now the pattern I'm using for this is just a general 60s style shift dress that I happen to have a pattern for, and like the pattern, the fabrics I'm going to be using are also all things I already had. So, my first step, long before I began any kind of construction or cutting out, was to figure out exactly how much of what fabrics I had and where I wanted all of them to go. So I made a schematic to figure out the rough placement of them all, and then I could start looking at cutting out. for this dress. I wanted to have a base layer of fabric to attach all of the other fabrics to because I didn't really think it would be a great idea to like patchwork the different fabrics together. I didn't think that would work very well or hang correctly once it was made up into a dress because the fabrics I've pulled from my stash aren't all the same fibre and are various different weights and tightnesses of weave. So I thought having a base layer was a smart thing to do, but I didn't want to use anything particularly hefty because that would add a lot of weight to the dress and make it potentially too hot to wear, so I decided to use this really lightweight black muslin. So in terms of the pattern, Based on the finished garment measurements for the pattern, I needed to use a size 18 for this. However, I was concerned that it wasn't going to correctly fit my hips. So what I did was cut out the size 20 for the back piece and the size 18 for the front piece. And I'd initially planned to kind of slope from the underarm of the size 18 out to the hip of the size 20 in order to give me the additional space in the back, but I wasn't confident that I was going to be able to do that accurately, so the new line I created for the side seam on the back panel would match up with the one on the front panel, and that I would be able to correctly place the waist. So I decided to just stick with the size 20 back panel as it was, and add half an inch to the back facings so that they would still match up. Important things to say about the making process for this one, certain aspects of it took dramatically longer than I expected them to. Cutting out, in particular, took a really long time, because when I had my concept of, oh, I can make various patches, or the illusion of patches, on this dress, I didn't consider that that would mean I would basically need to cut out multiple parts of the dress in multiple fabrics, while keeping in mind what the right side of the fabric was so I made sure I had the right direction of it up. It was long and tedious and tricky, and thank goodness for my schematic because I definitely wouldn't have been able to do it correctly otherwise. But yeah, the cutting out was a process, and it took hours. So it might be very slightly regretting this project, or at least parts of it. I've done that thing that I do where I think of an idea that I love, that sounds really cool and really fun, and I don't think about the practicalities of it or the amount of time that thing that I want to do will take. This is my second day working on this. I've probably put at least 10 hours into this already, if not more, and I've only just finished cutting out all of my pieces of fabric. <sighs> And cutting out is not one of my favourite things to do, it's kind of pretty tedious. So I am grumpy, and before I start properly sewing this, I should kind of check that the front panel that I cut actually fits me, or do any adjusting that I need to, to make it work for me. Which now that I think about it, I definitely should have done before I cut out all of my other sections of fabric to the same size that the front panel is. But 
oh well, what's done is done and cannot be undone. What can be done now is to have lunch, because that's important, then make myself another hot drink, have a bit of a breather, and come back to start fitting this front panel. I have four days, by the way. It's the 27th right now. I have four days to finish making this and edit the entire video. Will I be able to do it? I don't know. I'm gonna do my best. No, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna make it happen. It's gonna be a thing. But first, I do need to eat lunch. Let us go forth. Okay, so, so I have done a test of the rough fit of the front piece via my centre seam being done and pinning my darts. <sighs> and it's a little bit tight across the chest, which I'm a little nervous about, but I don't really want to cut a new front piece and the back piece is bigger than I need it to be. So the side seams around the chest being a little bit pulled forward is not going to be the end of the world, to be honest. Like, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll work fine, which means I now need to take all of the pins I've just put in this out and start pulling all of my various fabrics to attach to this piece and putting them in their correct position. I think that's the next step. I might actually read the instructions for this pattern because the shape of the facings slightly confuses me. You will probably see every mug I have acquired from a Halloween section this year make an appearance in this video, by the way. You're welcome. Okay, let's figure out what bits go where. I'm starting to get quite nervous about this because it is the end of the second day that I've been working on this. It is 8.30 in the evening and I've only just gotten to the point where the front piece for this dress has all of its fabrics in some way attached to it, either properly stitched on or flat lined on. And I still have both of the back pieces to sew all of the fabrics to, all of the darts to do, and all of the black lines of fabric tape to sew onto this before I can even start with the actual construction of the dress. The actual construction should be quite quick because it's literally three main pieces, a collar and facings, but I don't have a lot of time and still have a lot of work to get through. I, I started pinning the different fabrics to one of the back pieces and it's going a lot quicker. I think the front was a lot slower because there are more pieces and they overlap more and so I had to do a lot more figuring out. Whereas the back is pretty straightforward except for one piece, they all just go to the centre back so there's a, a central point that all of them kind of stop at except for one single piece which I'm still figuring out what to do with. Oh well, I need to have some dinner and stop working on this for a while. I'm so nervous. I don't, I don't know. I'm getting really worried that I'm not going to be able to do this in time. But I'm going to give it my damnedest. We'll give it a go and see, I guess. I shall see you on the morrow. I mostly kept my different layers of fabric together by pinning them, or in certain places where pins were going to cause issues because they intersected with seams or similar, I just flatlined the pieces together so that they would behave essentially like one fabric. If I had had more time, or if I had wanted to be particularly precise about this, I could have flatlined all of my pieces to the base fabric, but I was very pressed for time, and it really didn't seem like a worthwhile use of that, so pins would be just fine. In some places, I do think that led to the fabric shifting a little, particularly with the linen, but it wasn't a huge issue or particularly noticeable.
So all of our different fabrics are attached to the base panels of the dress that I cut out. That's great. I am getting so stressed about time. It's quarter to two on my third day working on this. Um, I'm getting real nervy about if I'm going to be able to finish this or not. I flatlined various bits of the fabric so that it's easier to work with when putting in darts and doing seams, etc. And the darts are the next step. I think the order that things need to happen in is darts, then black tape in various locations, then start constructing this in earnest as it is outlined in the pattern instructions. Also, I have a new pin cushion that a friend made for me. I asked them if they could make a little pumpkin. She very happily obliged. The same friend that made my little skeleton pin cushion made this for me. Okay. Uh, although time is an illusion, it's a very persistent one, and it is going by very swiftly, so let's get the darts done. Right. <sighs> okay, so I thought it would be a good idea, since I've now put all of the fabric on these and done and pressed the darts, to check how the front piece was fitting, because I was a bit worried about that. I'm now more worried about it, because it seems to have gotten a bit smaller. Which shouldn't be a surprise to me, because my mum makes quilts, and when you quilt things, they do get smaller. That's a natural part of the process, and I know that. But I just hadn't thought of this as quilting, which it basically is. I'm sewing multiple layers of fabric together, so it's not surprising that as when you quilt a quilt, it has gotten slightly smaller. But that's a bit of a problem, because it was already a little bit on the small side. So I'm not sure what to do or how to deal with that because all of my fabric is on it. So I don't want to take all of it off and cut a new front piece and do it again because that would just be absolutely maddening. <sighs> but the back is, I think, bigger than I need it to be, especially on the upper back. And the chest of this is where it's too small. The, the hips are a little scant as well, and the waist is totally fine. The story of my life. Usually the chest is too small, the hips are about right, and the waist is too big. That just tends to be how things fit on me. I'm trying to think about what my options are, other than just ripping this apart and starting over, because I really don't want to do that. And one thing I noticed when going through the instructions is that the order of construction that it gives is to do the facing on the front and back pieces before the back or side seams get done. So the last parts of constructing this, other than putting the zip in and hemming it, is the centre back seam and the side seams. So an option is that I could just continue with construction as if everything is perfectly fine, put all the facings on, and then when I get to the point of doing the side seams and the centre back seam, check the fit, and if it's too small, I could maybe cut some strips of the black fabric I'm using and insert a strip of it down the side so that it ends up about three quarters of an inch wide at each side, which would give me enough space. That would be fine. Like three quarters of an inch on each side would solve the fit problem. And black strips that are three quarters of an inch wide on each side under the arm would match the black strips that I'm going to do in fabric tape. So not to just procrastinate solving my problem, but I'm going to procrastinate solving my problem. <laughs> or rather, I'm going to be strategic about when I tackle this issue. It could be that I put it all together and the fit is okay. I don't think that's going to be the case, but it might. It might be. And if the fit is an issue, then I just add some narrow strips of black fabric down each side. That seems far more appealing to me than the rip everything off the front piece of this and start over on the part that has been the most time consuming in the two and a bit days I've been working on this. So yeah, we're gonna make the fit issue a future Emily problem. Just get back to constructing this and hope for the best. Will future me hate me for it? Entirely possible, but oh well. 
similarly to the cutting out, the addition of the black fabric tape was a bit of an undertaking as well, partly because I needed to keep in mind where I had planned the black lines were going to intersect, and figure out the correct order to add everything so I didn't end up with any random ends of black tape just flying in the wind. Now when attaching my black fabric tape to this dress, I decided to do something very sensible and listen to my mother by using a walking foot while I was attaching it. Just in case you don't know, a standard sewing machine foot exerts pressure downward while you're sewing, and while that generally works for most things you're going to make, in certain situations, particularly when sewing multiple layers of fabric together, that can basically shift the layers so that they're no longer correctly aligned, and for something like this, that would be really inconvenient. However, a walking foot is basically made so that it doesn't continually exert pressure, and as the name suggests, kind of walks along the fabric lifts up now and then, like you would lift up your feet while walking, and that allows you, when sewing multiple layers of fabric together, to keep them correctly aligned and not have to worry about the presser foot shifting them. It is also loud as hell and I'm sure my neighbours absolutely hated me. I am so pink. Why am I so pink? Am I overheating a little? Okay. <sighs> so all of the bits of black fabric tape that I can put on the dress have been put on. There are some parts that can't be done until I've done the centre seam, so those will have to wait. It is nearly half seven. Sorry, the... 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 I don't want to just keep saying I'm anxious about not getting it done, but I, I, the, the anxiety is just rising, and if I... And if I don't, if I don't manage to get a massive chunk of construction done after dinner tonight, it, this just isn't going to happen. I'm going to go have my dinner and come back because what needs doing now is the stuff that the very simple pattern that I'm using that I decided to complicate to an astonishing degree because I'm incapable of doing straightforward projects that don't take a million years of tedious fiddly bullshit. What I can do after I come back from dinner is actually follow the rest of the instructions that are in the pattern because they're really simple. I need to prep the collar, sew the shoulder seams, put the facings and the collar on, and then do the side seam, the back seam, and the zip. The rest of it, comparatively, is very straightforward. I hope. I need a breather because my brain is turning into soup and my feet hurt because I have been standing without my orthopaedic slippers on and my joints are very unhappy about it, so I'm gonna go have some food, take some painkillers, chill out for a little bit, and then I shall return to the madness that I began in order to finish it. See you in a bit. <laughs> In most wonderful news, my shoulder seams are done, my collar's attached, and so are my facings. I kind of got into the zone, got into a flow, and it is well after midnight, and I'm not done, so I need to get up tomorrow and continue with this, which means I need some sleep. 
before that, I'm probably going to have a cup of tea to wind down and probably eat some chocolate. I'm really glad I got the facings on. That means that when I get up tomorrow, I can pin this up to check the fit, make some decisions about what I'm gonna do with the side bits, and then just finish this bitch. I'm making better time than I thought. I was really worried. I still am a little worried, but the actual construction after all the various fabrics I decided to add to this were attached is going pretty quickly. And I'm very thankful for that. So, tea, chocolate, sleep, and I'll see you on the morrow. A controversial decision I made with this one was not to add any interfacing to my facing pieces. My logic on that was that usually you do that in order to stiffen the area around the armhole and neck hole, and as all parts of this dress were already going to have two layers of fabric before the facings went on, I thought adding interfacing to the facings was going to make them unnecessarily stiff and probably make the armholes relatively uncomfortable. Okay, I wasn't planning on doing any talking to the camera, but I've just given this a precursory try on. I've pinned the centre back where the zip would be, and I decided to just chuck it on, just to see, just to check, just to figure out if I needed my little strips down the side of this to make this fit me, because I assumed it was going to be too small. But look, look, there is overlap on both sides. <sighs> I'm so relieved. I think it's going to be totally fine and I am so thankful because while I could absolutely just put strips down the side of this to make it fit me, it is far less work if I don't have to do that. Yay! I'm gonna go do my side seams. No, I'm gonna go do the last bit of fabric attachment on the back of this, then do my side seams, put my zip in and hem this biatch. I'm so happy. I'm so thankful. Ah, yes. Okay. Let's go. Final stretch. There were a couple of points where I had to deviate from the schematic that I made, particularly with the centre back. I had wanted to have a black strip down the centre back just to differentiate between the different fabrics there, but I didn't have a black zip that I could make visible and make look good. I only had an invisible zip that was the correct length. After pondering many concepts of how I could create the look of a black strip, I decided the simplest thing would be to just not have one. If I had thought about it before I'd started construction, or I'd read the instructions for the pattern before I created my schematic and cut my fabrics, then maybe that wouldn't have been an issue, but that is not the way that I do things, is it? Okay, so my zip is in. A little skew if, maybe, but overall not too bad. The only thing left to do to get this to the stage that it's wearable is to hem it. Now the smart thing to do, the tidy thing to do, would be to hand fell it, but that takes time and I haven't got that. So instead I'm gonna whack my stitch length up on my machine and do some really visible black stitching along the bottom and justify it by it being Sally. Visible stitching is everywhere on her, so I think it's fine. But yeah, let's hem this, maybe tack my facings down, would be sensible. And then I can throw on the leggings and the turtleneck I dyed blue and put this look together.
So, my mod Sally, my 60s Sally, my Mary Quant inspired Sally is done and I'm so happy with it. I love it so much. I'm so proud of it. I'm not sure how, but it turned out even better than it was in my head. And that doesn't happen very often. I am genuinely so proud and so in love with this costume and this look. It's just beautiful. <laughs> and that probably sounds very arrogant to say, but I'm just really thrilled when I imagined it. In my head it was an incredible idea, but creating it in reality and wearing it, ah, oh, I think it's one of the best things I've ever made. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with me while I made this weird little 60s spin on The Nightmare Before Christmas. If you enjoyed this and you think other people would enjoy this, I am so pleased with this project. If you were going to choose anything of mine to share around, like send to friends, stick on Reddit or whatever, make it this one. I hope you had a good time. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween and it makes you feel as good as I feel right now. If you want to keep sticking around that would be really cool, but whether you decide to keep hanging out or not, I hope everything's okay in your world, and I will see you all the next time. I have very little time before this video is meant to go out. Halloween is tomorrow, and I want this to go out before the end of it, so I need to go get my butt in gear and edit this. Fingers crossed I can edit a video in a day. I've never done that before. Pray for me. <laughs> Please.